Welcome to another math lesson. I'm Mr. Prolarski and I'm your math teacher. Today we're going to be taking a look at the RISE method to problem solving. The objective for today's lesson is I will be able to use the RISE method to solve problems. Let me say that again. I will be able to use the RISE method to solve problems. Today we're going to be talking about the RISE system to solving problems. And in using the RISE system, what we do is we read, illustrate, solve, and explain. And we break this down, and you'll see in the example that I'll do, how I break it down into four quadrants. And in the one quadrant, we read the problem. First thing you actually have to do is read the problem. After you read the problem, in the read section, you'll actually write out the question and you'll list out the important information. In the illustrate portion, you're going to define variables and make a drawing or a table. In today's example, I'm going to be making a table. Actually, I'll be making both a table and a drawing. Then you're going to want to write the equation or the expression you're going to use to solve the problem. In the solve portion, you're going to solve the equation or substitute into the expression and evaluate to get your answer. Then you're going to also justify the steps in solving the equation or evaluating the expression. What properties did you use to solve the equation or evaluate the expression? Finally, in the explain section, you're going to write out the answer to your equation or your expression. And then you're going to write a sentence explaining that answer. So let's take a look at how to rise up to the occasion and solve problems in a meaningful way. Here's the first problem we're going to take a look at using the RISE method to solving problems. First we have to read the problem, then we're going to fill in some information here. So let's read. Jose woke up late, missed the bus, and had to walk to school. He walked at an average rate of 2 miles per hour, he rode the bus home and averaged 25 miles per hour. The entire trip took one and a half hours. How long did it take Jose to walk to school? So we read the problem. So let's think about some important information. And the first piece of important information is the actual question. And that's right here. And it's pretty easy to tell what the question is if there's a question mark. Sometimes the question can be stated without a question mark. But the question is, how long did it take Jose to walk to school? And what I mean by, or what I meant by on the previous slide was to actually write it down. I want us to write the question down. How long did it take Jose to walk to school? How long, and I'm going to shorten that up a little bit. How long to walk to school? We know the boy's name's Jose, so how long to walk to school? That's the question. Now, some important information here is on his walk to school, he averaged two miles per hour. So we're going to write that down. On his walk to school, he averaged two miles per hour. And on the bus ride home, he rode the bus home and averaged 25 miles per hour. This is important information. Last piece of important information is that the entire trip took one and a half hours. It takes a little bit of time to write that out. You can see my handwriting is not perfect, but as long as it, you can read it. Now, this sets up to be, from reading it, a distance problem. And the distance formula is distance is equal to rate times time. And when solving distance problems, it's usually easiest to make a table here. We don't use this first part. It's going to be a, a three column by, or four column by three row table. We don't use that first box. And here, in this first column, we put where we're traveling. And this is a round trip 
travel. So the, the first part's going to be his trip to school. I spelled school wrong, forgot my C, but there it is. His trip to school and then his trip home. And up here, I like to put the rate times the time being equal to the distance. So the rate to school is two miles an hour. And the rate home was 25 miles an hour. Now the time, that's where it gets a little tricky. The entire trip from home to school and then back again round trip took one and a half hours I'm gonna write that as a decimal 1.5 hours that's how long it took so the whole trip took 1.5 hours so we take a look at the question how long to walk to school that's what we're being asked to find so that's where we want to put our variable since that will be that's what we're being asked to find and then that variable that I'm part of the time walking to school, we will subtract it from the whole amount. It took them one and a half hours total. And if we subtract away the time from school, that'll give us the time from home. So this last column is made by going 2t, multiplying the rate times the time. And this one, 25 times 1.5 minus t. I didn't make my table big enough, but you get the idea. So these expressions in the distance column, right here and right here, those represent the distance from the school to home and vice versa, the round trip. And those two things are equal. The distance is equal to the distance here. So the equation we write was going to be 25 times 1.15 or times the quantity 1.15 minus t and that's going to be equal to 2t. So in our illustrate portion I have my table here's a little diagram to show the round trip travel and here's my equation because the two distances are equal. So we move on to the solve portion we take this equation we just wrote and we solve it. Remember we're going to want to justify the steps so the equation we need to solve is 25 times the quantity 1.5 minus t is equal to 2t. Now to solve this equation, I'm going to move this over a little bit so I have some room to justify my steps. The first part of this equation is to distribute the 25 using the distributive property. So 25 times 1.5 is 37.5. 25 times minus t is minus 25t. And that's equal to 2t. And to justify my work there, I used the dis distributive property. Now, since I have variables on both sides, I'm going to get rid of the minus 25t by adding 25t to both sides. The 25t is on the left cancel, leaving 37.5 equal to 27t. And I, to justify that step, that's the addition property of equality. And finally, I have to get rid of this coefficient of 27 by dividing 27 by each side. And that's the division property of equality. And that gives, and simply can use a calculator to do this, but that gives on the calculator 1.38. And that 8 does repeat. So, when I go to write my answer in the explain portion, I'm going to write it and I'm going to round it at this point. I'm going to say t is going to be approximately equal to 1.4. Put some units on that since that's time. 
It's going to be talking about hours because this problem expressed in miles per hour. So that's my answer. T is approximately equal to 1.4 hours. Now explain that. Simply write a sentence explaining the answer and basically restating the question. It took Jose 1.4 hours to walk to school. Now you may ask yourself, why am I sitting here watching this guy write this out? Because I write this out because this is what I want you to do. This is what I want you to model. I want you to write all this stuff down. To model to me or demonstrate to me that you understand the entire problem. This has been Rise to Solve a Round Trip Distance Formula Problem.